Okay, so the resource curse, what really is it? Um, as commonly understood, it's taken to mean, uh, it's the theory that the presence and extraction of natural resources, and in our case, mineral resources, does more harm to developing countries than good. The first thing I did when I was looking at, my, at, at writing my report was I used um, a very thorough literature review that was conducted by Oxford Policy Management on behalf of the International Council on Mining and Metals. And they did uh, an extensive review of resource curse literature, the whole canon basically going, going over the theories that I just mentioned and their offshoots. And um, what they found was that the presence and extraction of mineral resources does not really have much predictive value over the macroeconomic outcomes in developing countries. And so really has to be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. And I took a quote here from their report basically saying that there's no one clear conclusion about the presence of a resource curse or not. Okay, so the question today is, do the theories hold up? Does actual evidence in developing countries uh, prove that there is a resource curse? What we decided to do, um, and I collaborated with uh, Oxford Policy Management on behalf of ICMM, to put together a life cycle assessment, not just of one mine, but of the entire large-scale gold mining industry in Tanzania. So what we did was collect data from the World Gold Council members who have large operations there. So we looked um, at Barrick, Anglo Gold Ashanti, and then I Am Gold has also been exploring in Tanzania for some time. Um, since we were able to extract confidential internal data from the companies, I acted as sole aggregator. So I was the only person that saw the confidential data and therefore aggregated together, kind of masked who was doing what. Um, and we collected over a 40-year time period. So we started in um, 95, which I believe was the beginning of the construction of North Mara Barracks Mine, and um, ended in 2034, which is the planned closure date of, I believe it's Buzwagi, another barrack mine. Tax and royalty payments. This data was a little bit hard to obtain, and hopefully that's going to be better soon in, in light of the fact that Tanzania joined the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. So we use data from the companies in our survey as well as um, the Ministry of Finance data, which was actually very spotty. Um, and OPM kind of came up with two scenarios. One was conservative assumptions about tax collections based on just a straightforward time series. Um, what OPM did and what, what makes more sense is a realistic assumption where you look at the effects of um, rolling off depreciation allowances that are much heavier in the earlier part of a mine's life when the construction and initial capital outlay costs are being defrayed through depreciation. What was done with the research, we put on um, Oxford policy management on behalf of the International Council on Mining and Metals. Um, some local Tanzanian um, Ministry of Mines officials got together and had in Dar es Salaam a workshop uh, last fall. It was very well attended. People from 14 government ministries came and it was kind of a training program for mid-level uh, government and agency workers in Tanzania so that their expectations could be a little bit more realistically managed as to what they can stand to benefit, how they can benefit from mining. I got interviewed on the radio, uh, CNBC and a lot of other news outlets. Um, so we did get a lot of airtime about this study. I think because it was quantitative and it didn't come across as industry PR as much as just a study. And um, we were just pr really reporting the facts that we found.